Remnant 2's first DLC, The Awakened King, is here, and with it comes a brand new storyline, tons of new gear, and the most exciting addition to the game, The Ritualist. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today I'm sharing everything you need to know about the game's brand new archetype. Revealed ahead of the DLC's launch, The Ritualist is a master of pain and suffering, but what that means in an actual gameplay sense, well, I wasn't entirely clear until I got my hands on the archetype myself. But first, before we get into everything the class brings to the table, let's talk quickly about how to unlock it. Much like most of the other secrets in Remnant 2, it's entirely possible to miss this archetype if you don't have a curious mind. The game's new overworld map, the Forlorn Shore, is massive, so big in fact, the same overarching zone is broken down into smaller subsections. To unlock the Ritualist, you'll need to progress through the new content until you reach the Drowned Wen. You'll have to fight through a small intro section of the zone, but eventually you'll come to a canal section. It's impossible to miss as it's a crossroads to other parts of the Forlorn Shore. Once you clear out the rabble, and be warned there are lots of enemies lying in wait, you'll want to identify this string of boats. While not connected, they make a path, and that path is your key to unlocking the archetype. Drop down onto the boats and make your way across as you jump from boat to boat, heading under the docks and towards the back of the area. There, you'll notice a small hole in the wall, which obviously you'll want to explore. Work your way through the tunnel and towards the back, and you'll see a witch casting some sort of dark magic on one of those strange pig-dog creatures. Kill the enemies, and behind where the witch was performing the ritual, you'll be able to pick up the ragged poppet on the post at the back of the cave. Hopefully, at this point, your muscle memory will kick in. Head back to Ward 13 and bring the material to Wallace on the outskirts of the ramshackle town. Hand in the item and he'll turn it into the Cursed Effigy Engram, giving you access to the brand new Ritualist Archetype. The Ritualist is all about applying status effects to enemies and then capitalizing on those negative debuffs by amplifying damage. It's a dangerously potent class in the right hands and can absolutely tear through enemies and bosses alike if you know how to build around its kit. Unlike some of the archetypes that just work right out of the box, if you don't equip weapons, rings, and amulets that synergize with the Ritualist's skills, perks, and traits, it'll be less than effective. The class's prime perk is Vile. Negative status effects applied by the Ritualist inflict Infected, which grants 10% more damage from status effects. On death, all status effects on the enemy spread to nearby enemies within 15 meters. The trait is called Affliction, and it increases status effect duration against enemies by 10% at level 1, all the way up to 100% at level 10. As you'll see, the perks also lean into the Ritualist's ability to amplify status damage. The damage perk, Wrath, increases all damage and critical chance to enemies affected by negative status effects. When an enemy is killed, the team perk, Terrify, kicks in. All enemies within 5 meters of the killed target receive the Terrify debuff. Terrified enemies are more likely to drop ammo on death, and those terrified targets deal reduced damage. Dark Blood is the Ritualist Utility perk. This reduces how much damage you receive from negative status effects and reduces the buildup of blight. Finally, the Relic perk, Purge, gives the Ritualist the ability to cleanse all negative status effects by using the Relic, transferring any purged effects to enemies within close range. There's no doubt it's an interesting lineup of perks, all aimed at making groups of enemies suffer from the Ritualist's ability to spread status effects and sow chaos amongst the followers of the One True King. Where things get really interesting is with the class's skills, which as you can imagine, are all designed to apply and spread negative status effects on enemies. The first skill, Eruption, creates a small explosion that ripples out and hits all enemies in a rather large AoE. That radius and the damage of the explosion is increased by 100% for each unique status effect on a target. It also refreshes all current status effects on the targets that are hit. It's a solid starter skill, one that's on a low cooldown and holds two charges, but you have to be able to inflict negative status effects first for this ability to make much of an impact. I recommend you check in with Dwell back in Ward 13, who sells a few new mutators, one of which, Fetid Wounds, has an awesome level 10 bonus that applies Corroded on enemies whenever you hit a ranged weak spot or ranged critical hit. That's one status effect you almost get for free so long as you know where to shoot on each enemy. The second ability is my personal favorite, Miasma, which casts a massive AoE that applies Bleeding, Burning, Overloaded, and Corroded to all enemies hit. 
How long those debuffs last on enemies depends on your trait level as well as support and gear, but for the most part, the ability sets you up for near instant kills on most foes. Finally, there's Death Wish, which negates all healing to self and drains 300% life over 20 seconds, but gives you a flat all-around damage increase of 35% and grants 10% base damage lifesteal. This is very much a risk versus reward type of scenario, and if you're confident in your ability to constantly hit enemies during the duration of the skill, you can essentially zero out the negative effect while still gaining access to the incredibly high all damage increase. Each skill sets up the Ritualist for a different type of playstyle. Eruption assumes you have the ability to apply your own negative status effect and gives you an on-demand, low cooldown damaging ability. Miasma applies those status effects for you and opens the door for more ways to synergize once the effects are ticking down on enemies. And Deathwish takes the class in a completely different direction, paving the way for some more traditional damage-centric builds so long as you can counteract the negative effect. Now that you've unlocked the Ritualist and have an understanding of its kit, we need to look the part, and you better believe Gunfire Games isn't going to let us reap all this chaos without some drip. To unlock the Ritualist armor, called Zealot Armor, you need to progress through a large chunk of the Forlorn Coast. Eventually, you'll make your way across this stone bridge and towards the half-constructed tower nearby. Make your way down towards the bottom, but eventually, you'll be forced to go outside and wrap around a small pathway right below all those hanging bodies you first saw when you entered the zone. Notice that one of them is wearing a full set of Ritualist gear. Shoot the body and it'll fall down and you'll be able to claim a full set of Zealot armor. Now, about those weapons. To unlock the Ritualist Scythe, you'll need to go to the Forgotten Commune, one of the first dungeons you'll have access to in the DLC. There, you'll find two purple altars in different parts of the zone. At certain health thresholds, the altar will summon a wave of enemies. Burn down the altar, survive the wave, rinse and repeat until the altar is dead. There are two within the zone, so explore a bit until you find the location of each, but once you defeat the encounter, the altar will explode and you'll receive one piece of a melee weapon. Once you have both pieces, inspect the hilt of the weapon and continue to rotate it until you see a small white circle. Use the interact button and the game will put the two pieces together and you'll be rewarded with the Ritualist Scythe. This melee weapon has a baked in mod power called Reaver, which provides a flat 10% melee damage boost if the target is suffering from any negative status effects. Finally, let's get the Ritualist starting long gun, the Sparkfire Shotgun. To do this, you'll need to locate the Derelict Lighthouse Dungeon, which you can access from the Drowned Wen. You'll need to get across the entire dock section, and once you make it to this checkpoint, you'll want to head under the stone archway. It'll bring you back under the well, and you'll notice a ladder heading deeper underground. Move through the small sewer section, hang a right, and you'll have access to the new Derelict Lighthouse map. Keep in mind, all of these map locations will change once you're off your first one-shot adventure mode playthrough. The team strategically gave players access to all of the new Awakened King content the first time you activate it. But after that, the dungeon maps can rotate to include other Losa maps. So keep in mind the directions I'm giving you now only work the first time. Once you reach the Derelict Lighthouse map, Work your way through the zone until you eventually get to this big warehouse. Inside, you'll fight two gnarly aberrations, and upon defeating them, you'll receive the lighthouse key. Word of warning, there are two doors within the lighthouse that can use this key, but you only get one shot to make your choice. The key itself is also part of the puzzle. When you first pick up the key, you can use it on the upstairs locked door. But if you inspect the key and interact with it, it'll flip over and you'll be able to use it on the basement locked door. In this case, you'll want to head left at the end of the bridge leading to the lighthouse and move down into the cellar and unlock the door there. This will give you access to the workshop and one of the coolest weapons added to the game, the Sparkfire Shotgun. What's really stand out about this weapon is the fact that at a baseline, it fires off incendiary shells, which apply burning to enemies. Think about how the new archetype capitalizes on damage, and yeah, you've got a sure fire way to apply another negative status effect. Unintended. I'm so sorry. If you add the Fetid Wounds Mutator we talked about before onto the Sparkfire Shotgun, well now that's two status effects with almost no effort. So you see, this class can ramp up quickly. With all that in mind, your Sparkfire Shotgun in hand and your Ritualist Armor adorned, you are now ready to face any enemies the One True King throws your way. Friends, we are just getting started, so if you want more Remnant 2 videos in your feed, 
you already know what to do. Come on, don't make me beg. Hit that thumbs up, consider subscribing, because it's still the single best way to help channels like ours reach new audiences. You can also join us on Discord if you want to hang out with the team, talk about great games, and enter for your chance to win tons of free prizes. That link, as always, is below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.